John 17:4 through 9 I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those who you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept thy word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. So Jesus is giving us this example in this prayer in the 17th chapter of John of participating in the lives of others. And he is specific. Now, this is the night before he is to be crucified and to die. And he is taking his time to pray for his followers. And he's saying, Father, you gave them to me. I've protected them. Now I'm asking you to protect them in my absence because they're yours. So he is participating in their lives even as he is physically leaving them. What a, what a great example. We can do that as well. And let's look at a few scriptures along those lines. Colossians 1, 9 through 12. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience, while joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. And here the Apostle Paul is, again, did you notice that this whole program is based on dramatic things? Yes. And prayer is a dramatic event. It truly, truly is. And the Apostle here is saying, for this reason, since that day we heard it, have not ceased praying for you. So the apostle is encouraging the, 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 the church, the new church of Christianity in Colossae, that he is praying for them on a daily basis. And then he tells them, and here's what I'm praying for. He's not saying I'm praying that you know you all become uh, wealthy and that you have no cares in the world and that everything just comes your way and then and, and, and that you don't have to lift a finger anymore because God will take care and protect you. No, I don't think so. No, not at all. He's saying I'm asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Why? So that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him. Bearing fruit in every good work. That's what he's praying for them for. So he's, his prayer for them is not about their physical circumstances, but it's more about their spiritual circumstances. And he's saying, I want you to be faithful to your calling. And I want nothing to get in the way of that. And I pray earnestly for that. What, what a tremendous example of the kinds of things we ought to be sort of lending a hand toward others for. Luke six twenty eight, bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. Now, is that an easy thing? No. <laughs> but it's a necessary thing. Yes. Because we need to be able to rise above human reaction. See, I think that's where prayer gets lost sometimes. We pray out of human reaction. But prayer actually needs to rise above human reaction. It's a whole different approach. And if we can bless those who curse us and pray for those who abuse us, boy, what a great... Now, what are you going to pray? Oh, Lord, give them what they got coming. (laughs) No. (laughs) That's not what it's saying. I mean, hey, I prayed for them. What do you want from me? (laughs) That's not what it's about. It is something much higher than that. And again, you have the example of Jesus in his life showing us how to do that. Hebrews 13, verse 18. Pray for us. We are sure that we have a clear conscience, desiring to act honorably in all things. So even though the apostle had this, had a, he, he had a clear conscience. He knew that he was doing things out of his desire to serve God. I mean, the apostle Paul, at the end of his life, when he's writing to Timothy, he has a confidence in the fact that he has worked his heart out 
for the purpose of, of Christ. But he still needs prayers. Exactly. Exactly. So even this, this, this brother who was so strong and had the ability to, to say, henceforth is laid up for me a crown of glory, is asking for the prayers of the brotherhood. One more scripture and we need to close. Philippians 1, 2 through 6. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will be, bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. Praying, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you. We have the ability to participate in the lives of others through the power of prayer. Sometimes people need a hand and you're not around to be able to give it, but you can through prayer. Sometimes people need encouragement, but you're not in contact with them, but you can through prayer. Sometimes uh, people need some guidance and you're not around to help them, but you can through prayer. Prayer is a powerful, powerful part of our lives. What we need to do is as we approach prayer, we need to approach it with sincerity and humility, realizing that going through the name of Jesus is important and that we don't want to pray vain repetitions, but pray from the heart for the will of God to be done. For Jonathan and Rick, this is Christian Questions. We'll be back again next week. But until then, what makes prayer work? Think about it.